Good morning and welcome to the FDP on uh, astronomy and astrophysics and uh, people are coming uh, slowly so I was waiting for some more time so uh, we will start so let the people join um, so this five days we will have a large number of sessions myself uh, I am Jayam Ganguly I am the uh, coordinator for this program and uh, uh, today before the inaugural session we will have a just a warm-up session where we will uh, see uh, some of the popular aspects it's a welcome call to astronomy and astrophysics and uh, this full five days we have in our FDP I have sent you the pro uh, this uh, schedule and you might have seen that we have uh, adjusted most of the areas at an introductory level because this is a heterogeneous group and uh, 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 there are uh, people from various disciplines so uh, actually it may some people may know uh, a, a part of what is discussed uh, and for some it may be new so those who know bear with us and those who uh, those who knew uh, those who are new to it uh, just try to uh, get as much as possible and apart from this we have also initiated due to popular demand the a whatsapp group yesterday evening uh, where many of you have joined so uh, i urge all of you to join so that uh, uh, we can discuss yeah, offline also if, if there are any uh, problems or if you don't understand certain things or uh, there are teachers also in that WhatsApp group so somebody will answer or within our group somebody can clarify the doubt so it will be a good discussion and that is how actually these all FDPs are very useful for us and um, uh, there are two things which are quite important as you all know uh, for this FDP one is that attendance you should have a, a minimum of 80 percent attendance attendance will once you have to mark per day so I will be uh, posting the Google uh, one form where you just uh, put your name email address and mobile number that is I think these are the three fields we have given so that we can put the attendance and then uh, uh, one more thing is that uh, Keep your mic muted during the talk so that it doesn't disturb uh, the session as a whole. Um, and uh, if you have any doubt, you can always uh, unmute and uh, ask the speaker to clarify your doubt. Of course, after, after each session, we will have a question and answer session where uh, most of your doubts will be cleared. And still, if you continue to have certain doubts or certain uh, issues which uh, you want to understand, then then actually uh, 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 you can uh, use the WhatsApp forum. Uh, so uh, uh, let's start uh, the first session. Uh, that is the uh, welcome call to astronomy and astrophysics. So um, let us see, we will introduce the subject, uh, astronomy as a whole, what it is all about, what are the objects we can see. So I am sharing the screen and let us start the uh, session and we will continue this session up till uh, 11, uh, 10, 15 and from 10, 20 to 11 we have the inauguration of this FDP uh, and after that again from uh, 11, 11 to 11, uh, 45 I will continue with uh, the same uh, part remaining part of this uh, session first session and then we will have Sir, your voice from you, you, your side you can't hear my voice no voice from your side okay okay uh, okay let me see uh, just a minute uh, you are not audible okay okay I will see just, just a minute. It's not audible. Uh, there is no voice. Sir. Okay.
ಬಿಕಾಸ್ Uh, um, this is a heterogeneous group and uh, uh, there are people from various background and um, my, actually myself is Jan Ganguly who is the coordinator of this program and as you might have seen from the schedule that we have actually gone through uh, most of the areas in astronomy as, at an introductory level and uh, hopefully you will, you will appreciate the subject uh, by the time we reach the end of the uh, FDP. and then uh, we also on popular demand we have actually started a whatsapp group and i think many of you have joined it and those who have not joined you can also join uh, so they are actually beyond this classroom also we can continue discussions uh, uh, if there is any clarification if there is any problems uh, solving sessions so all those things can be done because there are all of us are there and there are teachers also speakers who will be there so that is also a part of it and then uh, two aspects are very important one is that uh, you should have an attendance of 80 percent so for that actually we are uh, posting the uh, our um, attendance sheet in the form of google form um, one form actually so please uh, enter your name uh, and uh, name and uh, email address and phone number uh, every day once you have to do that so that uh, your attendance can be updated so that form please don't forget to fill once in a day uh, it will be posted regularly at uh, various sessions so that you you should mark your attendance uh, because 80% attendance is re- required as per the uh, fdp norms and then uh, we will have at last one uh, small assessment so th- there also please uh, be uh, take notes of whatever is going on here so with this small introduction uh, welcome again and let us start uh, the program right so uh, let me just share my uh, screen uh, Uh, can all of you see these slides? Yeah. 
can somebody respond can is this slide visible yes sir yeah yeah fine thank you yes sir visible sir visible sir okay okay thank you so we will start uh, a welcome call to astronomy and astrophysics so um, so we all of us uh, have some idea or the other when we have started uh, understanding astronomy astronomy is taught uh, exactly as a small part a small chapter maybe uh, up till our high school and uh, Mm, then uh, we with our natural interest if we see our popular magazines or science magazines or in newspapers we do understand something about astronomy but um, um, astronomy understanding requires a, a little orientation so that we can appreciate those objects uh, what to look uh, where are those objects found what are the different categories of objects which are seen in the sky so uh, this first session is an introduction to that and then in future session we will go deep uh, various speakers will take one one aspect of various objects or uh, for example somebody will say you about how how pe astronomers measure what is the grid what is the what is the, what are the aspects of positional astronomy coordinate system then somebody will uh, venture into solar uh, what is sun what is actually sun what are its composition and all those things our solar system our galaxies uh, stars and uh, Uh, universe as such so we will we comets ga, meteors lot of things are there that we will see so le- let us see what all objects that we see in the sky so when you go to an open uh, field or when you go to your terrace in the and if there is a power cut or if you are in a remote area in uh, rural areas where there is less pollution uh, you see lot of stars in the sky so uh, these stars uh, has been there many um, uh, for long actually uh, and uh, many of our ancestors have also seen these stars and uh, uh, they started actually imagining lot of um, uh, different types of patterns in this in the sky um, uh, by joining certain uh, bright stars you know they started imagining because they saw that certain patterns are recurring so uh, they wanted to uh, they uh, they were keen observers our ancestors were keen observers and they uh, wanted to find out that whether the how is the regularity whether any change is occurring there and they wanted to have a framework on which actually they can understand what are phenomena occurring there so like that they started uh, imagining so previous our ancestors actually uh, they were more uh, they don't have like our objective lines and all those things they are uh, abstraction came much afterwards so they started imagining figures which they can imagine like a mythological figures uh, like horse with a wing uh, or a, a big serpent or something like that so uh, there are mythological figures uh, which they imagined and they form they they actually encompass the full sky their imagination and in that way actually they made a story of how mythol how each uh, mythological figures were uh, related to others and they form uh, uh, from various mythologies of greek indian and uh, uh, mesopotamian and lot of mythologies are each culture has their own depiction in the sky but then there is the basis of all and people started uh, forming uh, uh, their own and then ultimately uh, when it came to the modern times uh, they are standardized so uh, this you are seeing uh, that the, there are certain uh, stick diagram drawn and uh, as i said you that previously people were uh, seeing to lot of uh, Mm, mythological figures and then ultimately it was standardized and uh, using vertical and horizontal arcs so stars uh, are one of the objects there are different variety of stars there are uh, faint stars uh, faint star doesn't always mean that their energy output is less it may mean also that they are very far away there are bright stars that also doesn't mean that their energy output is very high they are relatively nearer to us uh, some are big stars some are red stars white stars so there are various uh, types of stars there are star clusters so our uh, actually uh, hipparchus uh, one of our most ancient uh, observers and astronomers uh, uh, he classified by unaided eye by normal eye he classified uh, around he could see around 6000 stars that is the estimates that he has uh, given and today also that estimate holds and um, if you have an age like we will speak about what are the ages uh, then you can see much more stars so the 
there are stars in the sky and as i told you that people started imagining uh, different types of uh, uh, diagrams uh, different types of figures uh, so using stick diagram they are uh, all the important parts are joined stars are joined and then a mythology uh, is formed like uh, horse cats uh, warrior hunter uh, rabbit snake so they started forming lot of figures these are all actually to remember the uh, because once the uh, people remember stories very well so once you label the stars with a story you remember the stars also that is the basis of forming and these are actually called constellations so we have uh, 88 constellations in the sky and uh, there there are uh, they are actually uh, uh, areas in this sky as for the modern understanding modern understanding is a, there is an union called international astronomical union which has representative from all the countries and they sit together all the astronomers sit together and um, they actually make decisions uh, standardize the thing so now sky is actually uh, formed with horizontal and vertical because in sky you no know, we don't have straight line because we are all we see that when we see the sky we see it as an hemispherical bow so there are horizontal and vertical arcs which is around and there are areas so with this horizontal and vertical arcs there are areas in the sky so we have 88 such areas each of the areas has um, one of the major because most of the culture has a basis like um, uh, in our india we have kal purush uh, in western westerners call them orion so these areas are marked together are, uh, and uh, each and every star belong to uh, one constellation and if they lie on the border it has been decided in which constellation it should lie and that is the way actually the constellations are um, uh, formed so there are 88 constellations and apart from that we uh, before we move further uh, these constellations uh, are of two categories uh, one is that uh, we have our sun uh, our planets moon which are uh, which are near because we are earth is a planet and uh, with that uh, we we move around the sun with us actually uh, all the other eight planet uh, all the other seven planets including us eight all the planets asteroids and lot of objects move around the sun so uh, the sun moon and these planets they follow a belt in the sky and that will become more clear when you see uh, the concept of celestial sphere and understand so uh, all those constellation which fall along that belt uh, the, the, it has been divided into uh, areas of equal divisions uh, approximately equal divisions uh, covering around 30 degree so that it becomes 360 degree when you take the full sky so those areas are called zodiacal constellations so we have 12 number of zodiacal constellations so 88 total constellations 12 zodiacal constellations so 88 minus 12 76 non zodiacal constellations but all the constellations Uh, are not of equal uh, in, in the sense that uh, uh, non zodiacal constellations and all are they, it, it is not a it are they are areas in this sky of various sizes and shapes and formed by vertical and horizontal arcs so this is all about stars and constellations what are the object what are the phenomena we can see in the sky or the things like when we see the sun and if you take sun and if you take a pin hole and project it on the wall if you project it you see that the disk of the sun is blotted with some dark patches so these are called actually the uh, sun spots Uh, so if you if you have a uh, a telescope uh, with a solar filter or there are telescope which are already attached filters are attached and you can directly see through it never see through a telescope directly at the sun without a proper filter or an aid uh, always use the pinhole camera method that is much safer so what you, what is seen is that there are certain areas you know, on the disk of the sun the uh, the disk yellow disk is shown in the figure but when you project it on the wall maybe you will see a white disk or inside that white disk you will see lot of uh, patches so they are called the sun spots so we see the phenomena of sun spots and you will understand more in future when other uh, when the in detail sun will be taught to you and then there are there is a phenomena where we have see when we uh, we uh, earth is one of the planet so between sun and earth there are two planets which move around the sun they are mercury and venus so uh, when this mercury and venus uh, when the geometry of this our uh, earth 
mercury venus uh, earth and all moving around uh, they happen to be in such a way that from earth we see that this uh, projected image um, of the uh, this one no it it appears that it crosses the disk of this earth they actually not the image we see the planet crossing the disk of this earth this phenomena is called a transit phenomena so we see venus transit we see mercury transit uh, they are rare but they do occur and so this is one of the phenomena which uh, are seen in the sky other very interesting phenomena is that uh, eclipse phenomena there are two types of eclipse uh, one is a solar eclipse and one is a lunar eclipse lunar eclipses are uh, uh, means uh, we have in a in a year a total number uh, there are uh, seven eclipses uh, and um, uh, a maximum seven eclipses can be there but uh, it um, it varies uh, so uh, this lunar eclipse occurs when actually uh, what happens is that earth's shadow falls on uh, the moon okay so we see that the moon's uh, moon's uh, visible area it gets uh, shadowed and it becomes darker or browner uh, in certain cases due to atmosphere where from where we are observing uh, and it is a interesting phenomena and it is quite safe to observe that so there are uh, uh, total lunar eclipse or partial lunar eclipse that can be observed so that is one thing and most beautiful part is this solar eclipse solar eclipse if it is a total solar eclipse it becomes very beautiful to observe Uh, solar eclipse occurs when actually uh, our uh, moon comes between earth and the uh, sun so we the moon actually blocks the disk of the sun uh, this happens because of a particular coincidence because our uh, moon's angular size is around 400 times uh, uh, less than sun and it is also 400 times uh, means uh, farther away uh, so uh, due to this combination it exactly the geometry matches and uh, uh, the disk of the sun is exactly blocked by the moon so uh, when this happens it happens for a few seconds you see a good halo uh, surrounding the uh, disk of the moon so that is uh, that is a total solar eclipse and when this moon moves out now we just see a diamond ring so that is one very beautiful phenomena i don't know many of you might have seen uh, or if you have not seen you can enjoy whenever it is so people are, there are people who chase the eclipse they go, go around the globe and they see the lunar eclipse so that is one thing and then if you observe uh, this uh, sun uh, through a filter you can see where for example there are as i told you there are special uh, telescopes solar telescopes or a projected image uh, magnified projection you will you will see that uh, on the edge on the limb of the sun on the edge of the solar disk you see certain features no certain prominences and all and if the, it is a very specialized telescope to observe sun you can see on much details the uh, processed image when you see you see the how dynamic is our sun so uh, sun is also one object and there is a field of study called uh, solar astro physics and people uh, study that in fair details and then we have uh, for example if you see the uh, um, moon rise uh, or uh, I, i am sorry if you see the sun rise from a particular location and throughout the year you will see that uh, uh, if you plot the position at a particular time you see that it describes a geometrical figure like an eight and that is called a solar anomaly analemma so uh, these are some of the phenomena which uh, you can experience uh, from uh, from uh, any location um, uh, because all uh, eclipses uh, for example if there is a to total solar eclipse it may be uh, there is a path of an uh, solar means totality from where you will see the total for all other paths it will be partial so all these things will be um, said to in much uh, details another object which is quite interesting and which is so available so much uh, we see it uh, every month uh, and uh, it is it becomes white and, uh, and then it uh, becomes in comes into phases something it is not uh, sometimes it is not at all visible and uh, it is the, one of the natural sources of light uh, where uh, in the moonlight when it is a full moon and there are actually a season in, so uh, in uh, one part of the year during september uh, where people actually work in the field um, uh, Uh, in rural india in nights uh, because uh, moonlight is available and it is called harvest moon so if you happen to see the moon uh, through a telescope i'm sure many of you might have seen but if you have not seen uh, it would have been good if this fdp would have been a physical fdp and all of you would have come here then we could have shown you with a telescope but anyway if you see the moon through a telescope you will see that there are certain uh, um, features there are certain craters the depressions there are some mountains and there are uh, and there are uh, there are uh, areas 
areas uh, there are marias darker areas in the sky so uh, we have lot of uh, important features uh, interesting features which can be seen on the surface of the moon uh, when you see it through a telescope so that is one of the objects which is good then there are planets as i told you um, that uh, we have uh, eight planets uh, earth being one actually uh, uh, prior to 1994 pluto was also classified as planet because uh, that time we we used to have nine planets so, but now uh, from that time onwards it has been declassified because the definition of the planets undergone a change so that will be again discussed uh, how what is the definition of the planet today is afternoon session is a session on a plan, our solar system so we have these eight planets and we uh, uh, our earth is there and uh, before earth we have uh, there are some planets which are rocky planets uh, these are called terrestrial planets and there are some planets which are mostly gaseous so they are called gas giants or gaseous planets so uh, uh, and uh, some planets are uh, very inhospitable and those things will be discussed so planets are for example now itself if you get up early in the morning say at 4 5 o'clock 5:30 and go your terrace or in your open field you will see that in the eastern sky there is a bright uh, bright object seen in the sky at a fairly at 40 degree uh, elevation so that is a 40 to 45 degree you can see uh, elevation there that is the planet um, uh, venus it is the morning star it is very beautiful to see very bright and you can enjoy that so similarly you can see uh, other planets also you can see jupiter you can see saturn but it may not be so bright as venus venus is much bright and why it is bright again that will be discussed later today and for mercury and uh, mercury you have to know where to see and it is uh, it is seen uh, in a very uh, not very far away from the horizon uh, around 28 degree you have to keep it in that uh, altitude only it can be seen so all this altitude i am using certain terminology which again will be clear when uh, actually positional astronomy aspects will be uh, described in our session so planets are one of the things and when you see with a telescope now you see this uh, uh, saturn appears beautiful because of its ring system jupiter it has a very marvelous features like you can see here there are red spots and there are uh, areas of cyclone so that is very uh, beautiful other than that which are more interesting aspects which can be seen is like our moon no this planet venus also exhibit phases and that was one of the proof actually uh, where uh, it confirmed our heliocentric theory of our previously people used to uh, believe on geocentric theory uh, which has complex geometries but uh, then uh, copernicus put forward his heliocentric theory and you can see uh, um, that uh, this part as it is shown uh, we see the phases of the venus that sometimes it is fully limited somewhat like our moon so that gave an idea that actually venus moves around the uh, sun so that is helios and planets moves around sun previously people used to think that everything moves around earth so that was wrong so that is a, the, the, this phases of venus is one thing which is interesting if you see uh, for example jupiter uh, through a telescope you can see uh, some dots are surrounding the jupiter and then they are actually the satellites the, the moons galilean moons there are a lot of satellites of jupiter but these uh, four satellites are very easy to see um, four or five you can see in the field and if you continue observing these uh, at a regular interval say daily if you observe you will see that the position change so sometimes you will see that there is uh, there are two here and three here sometimes uh, three will be uh, or one will be here four will be. so you can actually see the understand that it is moving around then if you see saturn you will see the ring system so that is also one thing and if you see mars uh, you will see uh, you will see its color fades you will see its polar caps you know, there are uh, certain regions features which you can see that uh, they change uh, it, during a, a long period of time when it is visible so this year it is looking in some way after 2 3 years if you see it again uh, it may have a, a different uh, uh, in these polar regions uh, may change uh, so, and further uh, as i told you that see uh, this is the geometry showing uh, the evening star uh, or morning star the planet venus and uh, see why it is not seen in the mid of the sky uh, at the total highest point venus is not seen it is seen only up till say 48 degree 49 degree so why it is so this geometry uh, shows that you can see that uh, the, the it it can only go up till certain elevation it can't go beyond that so but these are the things which you can see and then uh, we have 
just a minute uh, other interesting things are shooting stars so uh, they are called meteors so there are uh, there are certain periods in a year where you see you can see meteors uh, any day if you go to terrace you will see suddenly a streak of light uh, uh, crossing the sky uh, so uh, that is there but then uh, there are certain periods uh, certain dates in which you see certain uh, more number of meteors in certain directions so for example uh, the as i told you that there are 88 constellations and these meteors are actually space debris and when earth uh, passes uh, through these space debris uh, what happens is that uh, we see uh, as they enter through the gravity uh, we, they uh, gets lighted up due to the friction so we see the shooting stars then we see the comets we have a, a full session on comets so comet is also one of the objects constellations as i have already showed you that there are uh, various constellations in the sky that you can see there are double stars which is, some stars the two stars may be at very far distance from us but they are seeing along the same line of sight so we have double stars there are certain other group of stars they are called open clusters they are not tightly packed they are loosely area so they are called open clusters so group of stars that were formed from the same cloud molecular cloud and, and around the same time so they have approximately the same age so they are open star clusters they are tightly packed the tightly packed means not a rigid body it tightly means relatively tightly they are nearby and they have a common motion as they move around so they are called globular clusters um, they are mostly orbits uh, the galactic floor as satellites um, so uh, this is also one more thing which can be observed then there are certain uh, volumes of uh, gaseous volumes which are seen they are called nebulas uh, so there are various types of nebulas for example if a hot star is within a uh, gaseous volume it will energize the gaseous volume and at, at a certain point of time it will start emitting light so they are called uh, emission nebula this is a, a one of the example this is the orion nebula um, which is an emission nebula then there are certain clouds which actually uh, glow, means light up due to the reflection of certain starlight so they are called reflecting nebula they don't have light of their own they don't emit light but they reflect light so th that is the reason they are called reflecting and there are certain um, nebulas no, which have a lot of um, uh, dust in, in, in them and if there is a star behind no, you see a sill out this you might have seen when you are in a beach or something and sunset is occurring or sunrise is occurring and the uh, cloud is just covering the uh, sun so you see a sill out so like that sill out we have we have the dark nebula this is the horse nebula in constellation of Orion again and there are certain other things which are called planetary nebula this is again not in the same sense as the last three which we have discussed for example if a star evolves and ultimately it explodes it throws out its matter surrounding itself but you know that when it throws out it has a gravity so it will not disperse immediately into space it will be surrounding that central remaining part of the star which has actually erupted so this type of thing gives visibility like a nebula it is called a uh, planetary nebula so uh, this also we can see then we have uh, if you have gone through our uh, some rural areas you might have seen for for example in train journey or something like that uh, um, uh, or in a car uh, while you are going and it is totally dark you sometimes you see a patch of light a band of light in the sky uh, it's called uh, Milky Way it is our galaxy it is um, actually what is a patch of light it is a lot of lot large number of stars are there and so you can't actually resolve you can't uh, differentiate between individual stars and you appear like a band uh, you, for example uh, if you take uh, um, uh, 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 grains of sugar now you you have you can't count all sugar and if you put it together it, it, it like a, like a volume it appears together it is so you it like a patch it appears so you, you, you feel like a continuum just so that is our Milky Way that is our galaxy then there are other galaxies uh, like um, Andromeda galaxy uh, so galaxies are of various shapes and sizes and that also will be discussed in one of the sessions uh, of this LDP so um, again celestial sphere when you see the sky sky appears as a hemispherical bowel and um, we see uh, 
we see uh, objects, uh, stars in that hemispherical bound. So, that is the uh, uh, celestial sphere uh, on this lot of coordinate systems and all are defined to actually find the positions of these stars and ultimately uh, study its movement and dynamics, kinetics and all those things. So, that again will be discussed again uh, when we discuss the positional astronomy uh, at celestial sphere and coordinate system tomorrow. Uh, and uh, th there are certain, um, there is a one star in the sky. See, all these stars, most of these stars uh, rise and sets. There are some stars which never sets from a particular location. But there is one star which is always there, which never rises, which never sets. Uh, that is our pool star. Okay, because that lies along the uh, rotational axis of our Earth. Uh, so, it never rises and sets. Uh, so, that star is important uh, in the sense that uh, it shows us the direction of the north. So, but there, there are various ways to find out the north star uh, and uh, maybe this uh, slide is uh, explanatory in the sense that how, but before that we should understand what are the constellations and all and uh, some constellations. So, again this slide will be discussed maybe tomorrow I think uh, uh, we have this class on positional astronomy, uh, we have a class on uh, star, how to find out the constellations and star and that time how to locate the north star will also be discussed. So, that is one thing. So, this star, this slide I am skipping because uh, it is a bit, uh, it, it again will be discussed uh, tomorrow. So, how is the celestial sphere and what are the various grids in that, uh, what are the various important uh, circles uh, and why we have only circles uh, when we describe the geometry of the sky. So, again all these things will be discussed and there are uh, important certain circles like meridian equator, celestial equator uh, and um, and there are some term, terminology like highest point called zenith and all those things altitude directions and all will be discussed tomorrow so again so, so as i said you that uh, there is a star which is called the north star and all the stars uh, are actually appears to move uh, means uh, move are uh, revolving around uh, the north star so if you take a camera and fix it uh, and put it uh, uh, pointing towards the north star and leave the shutter open uh, the stars as it moves it will form trails in the uh, uh, image which is formed, star trails. So, this is uh, this is one of the pictures of the star trails. And then we have uh, um, uh, certain, uh, from certain locations of the earth, uh, we have a star, for example, we have very, uh, the stars rises vertically and sets, that is on the equator. And if you go to the poles, like North Pole and South Pole, all the stars will be moving uh, parallel to the horizon, that is, uh, stars will not set or uh, rise. So, they are called circumpolar stars. So, again, uh, this all will be discussed. So, there are various aspects. As you can see, what is rising and setting? So, this is, uh, this is our horizon and this is a star which uh, you see this rises in the east and sets in the west. So, this, uh, the, this particular star rises and sets. This particular star never sets. It is always there above the sky. So, this is our circumpolar star. And the bottom star though, this never appears on, this is our place on the earth and below this is not visible to the, this person. He can see only this part. Similarly, some person may be under now. So, uh, this particular star never uh, is above the horizon. So, it is not visible from this location. So, this is the way actually the motion of the star helps us and defines different types of stars. So, we can measure the uh, angular separation between stars. Stars uh, separations are mostly measured by angles. Uh, uh, so, we have uh, various angular measures uh, like as it is shown uh, with your fingers you can actually uh, calculate each uh, which uh, uh, finger represents a degree. Uh, three fingers, five degrees, like that. You can calculate the angular distance using this uh, rubik. So, that is quite interesting. And as I told you that um, uh, how sun moves uh, and uh, how things change in the sky, the, uh, we have earth and the, we have sun and the earth is moving around sun. So, from the earth actually we see the sun uh, in a particular background of constellation. So, uh, uh, so those are the zodiacal constellations. So, we have the zodiacal constellation and this is a star chart. So, which again will be explained to you when we are saying. So, from the, from a particular location, we can actually see uh, the stars and what are the constellation at a particular time and a chart representing that is called a, a star chart. So, there are various forms of star charts 
and the, the pollution no, which uh, covers uh, our sky so you can see in city the star li light is there so it is polluted in rural areas we can see more stars so this shows how light pollution actually steals a lot of stars from our vision and this magnitude scale again uh, we will try to discuss it uh, in the next uh, class so that is also uh, one part which is left all of you can see the screen anyone can you just respond whether the screen is visible yes sir yeah. it is visible okay okay thank you okay so now we have seen a brief uh, introduction to the objects in the sky and the different types of phenomena and now we will go into the astrophysical aspects and we will uh, just have a glimpse of uh, what are the different types of things and phenomena and the telescope as such and then uh, we will have a brief discussion on the definitions which are which will be used so that we will come slowly so uh, telescopes are actually one of the prime because objects we can't go and touch we can't see and everything is understood by the light which is coming from the objects and then by analyzing those lights uh, we study the objects in things so to get uh, more light uh, we have to have more bigger collecting area see our eye is uh, around our iris of our eye is around 5 millimeter in size so it uh, captures this uh, um, though it is a uh, it has a good quantum efficient uh, it is a good instrument but still it captures relatively less light and so we cannot observe a lot of things so if you increase the collecting area uh, that is the way actually uh, telescope helps us in observing more and more so there, there are various types of telescope like former picture was of a reflecting telescope which uses mirror uh, other one is a refracting telescope which uses lens uh, as the main objective and sometime or the other may be that somebody has uh, when you were young or uh, sometime in your lifetime up till now somebody might have pointed you and you might have been fortunate to see through a telescope you will see that how the difference it makes and how wonderful the universe is like so telescope is uh, one of the prime vital instrument for studying astronomy and for knowing more details about the astronomical objects so all this started in 1609 uh, when actually Galileo Galilei uh, uh, first came to know about uh, uh, telescope and he made his own uh, very miniature telescope but that was enough for actually revolutionizing the astronomy so he did this in 1609 and this is the telescope uh, which uh, was made by Galileo Galilei but Galileo didn't actually um, uh, discover the telescope what happened is that there was an optician called Hans Lepersche uh, who actually uh, uh, was an optician and so he has a lot of lenses and children used to play with his lenses maybe excess lenses or something and suddenly uh, what happened is that during one of the playing time uh, one child came and say himself if I keep two lenses one uh, in front of the other and see see that cross uh, from a church nearby is appearing much uh, church far away it appearing nearby so then again this person no, Hans Leposche saw that and he understood that in this way of arrangement he didn't understand the physics or all, all those things he was an optician only so he uh, uh, he saw the mechanics uh, how it works actually and he made uh, instruments and he gave it to the military general the king of that particular administrative province so that they can uh, take a military use of that and uh, stop uh, um, see the enemy ship coming from far away so that was his way of using it but then this uh, news was heard by Galileo who was far away and then he constructed his telescope but what difference he made is that he saw the sky using that particular instrument he saw the Venus the phases of the Venus as I was discussing in the morning phases of the Venus he saw he didn't understand because this planet Saturn has ring system it took a lot of time actually to people to understand even Galileo didn't fully understand means then uh, what exactly is the ring all about it uh, there are multiple observations then there were space observation ultimately which led people to conclusion and now we have photographs also that Saturn planet has a ring system not only Saturn we have Uranus or large giants gas giants Uranus Neptune and all has a ring system surrounding it so uh, that is there and then uh, uh, 
sun so this is also as i was telling in morning sun is not just a very inactive type of thing it's just glowing like a bulb it is not like that it's lot of activities going on and there is a special branch of physics and uh, uh, we had uh, the professor dipankar banerji here and his specialization is on sun and people there are a lot of people who work on sun and our next session is also on sun so we'll get a further details on this particular thing so best telescope was constructed by christian haugens uh, and in 1655 he discovered titan the largest satellite of saturn um, uh, and then after that all again using the telescope he uh, his big telescope he what a relatively big what he has constructed uh, he made uh, he found out the rings he has uh, discovered the rings of saturn they are actually surrounding the planet then people started observing with their telescope the uh, planet mars they found out that the polar region of us like we have in our earth the north pole and the south pole in the mars also there are polar regions and there some whitish patch appears and again disappears so there are ice and you know, a north polar ice caps which again shrinks and expands so that was also discovered uh, during the thing so these are were all done using the refracting telescope but the refracting telescope has certain inherent problems in it like you no know, no whenever we know that with problems with lenses there are chromatic pro aberration problems and their astigmatism and lot of other problems are there so to eliminate this problems we require uh, where uh, actually this uh, um, uh, chromatism will be eliminated by using lenses and that's what uh, actually uh, newton uh, uh, improved the model proposed uh, or initially built by nicolo zucchi and ultimately uh, it was a, it is called a newtonian uh, telescope which uses uh, reflectors uh, mirrors instead of means curved mirror instead of uh, lenses and then after that actually using a, a bigger telescope and bigger mirror uh, we pre previously people knew up till saturn because that is what is visible uh, to the unaided eye so they, they knew up till saturn and then using bigger telescope they knew uh, they came to know about a planet beyond saturn so that was the uranus was discovered so it was discovered in 1781 and then using this bigger telescope people started observing other parts of the sky photographing the sky and today even an amateur with a ccd camera if he photographs he get a very good picture of this orion nebula you see the orion nebula here so uh, we have in m42 orion nebula m is standing for the messier objects messier uh, actually catalog lot of objects in the sky and in his catalog he gives some number to it and this particular object this particular thing appeared in the 42nd number so it is called a Messier object 42. It is called otherwise the Orion Nebula, and there are various other catalogs also, like New Galactic Catalog (NGC) 1976. So like that, uh, uh, since the nebula has two parts, so M42 and M43. And uh, further, one more thing is that see the, these uh, distances of these objects. Again, you will be studying all this in details. They are measured in something called as a light year. All of you might have, know, all of you might know about this. So they are not in kilometer because they are so far distance. So the unit of measurement is itself light year that is the distance taken by light in one year so the uh, orion nebula is at a distance of 1300 light years away so what you are seeing now the orion nebula is actually was actually what it was 1300 years back so we are seeing back in time that, that is very important and then we have the willful galaxy uh, and uh, not only this galaxy many other galaxies were also seen so telescopes uh, refractors bigger telescopes started coming up and then in 1897 and we have here kes observatory chicago uh, the main lens was around 1 uh, meter across and then then there were reflectors also which were bigger and bigger reflectors were getting built and george ellery held a build a telescope of 1.5 meter uh, diameter mirror diameter at mount wilson uh, saint gabriel mountain so now today we have the great canary telescope 10.4 meter uh, mirror diameter uh, which is uh, the biggest and there are bigger telescope which are also in the drawing board and people are uh, constructing like a, a large a extremely large telescopes and all and in future we will have better telescopes to observe the sky 
So telescopes are of uh, different types and telescope mounts. Now on the telescope we will speak about all this. We will show you many mounts. The mount is actually the stand on which the telescope tube is kept. So this mount, so you see the designs vary and which each design has a particular uh, use, uh, how to use it and what are the facilities with that design. So there are different types of uh, uh, like, like altazimuth mount, equatorial mount. Now what is that altazimuth, azimuth altitude? This all will be explained to you in due course of this FTP. So this is the 2.5 meter Hooker telescope, you can say bigger telescope, it is a reflector telescope uh, and it was proposed by Hell and uh, it has a mirror diameter um, and after that actually we have a bigger telescope at my Hell has pro made a one proposed to make one more telescope of 5 meter in Palama mountain. So using all this telescope Edwin Hubble uh, actually concluded uh, it's through his, uh, studying the redshifts, uh, a spectral uh, redshift of all these uh, galaxies and concluded that the galaxies are moving away from each other that is our universe is expanding. So you can see the what this means the space uh, what happens is that if there are objects and it is space is stressed the objects are move apart from one another so this stretching occurs. So this is what is the, the uh, what is meant by uh, the expansion of the universe. Again in our cosmology session you will be uh, understanding uh, that it is not that the galaxies are expanding it is the uh, separation which is expanding due to the expansion of the space. So uh, we have a small animation which shows that how actually the separation increases as you can see the separations have increased. Now bigger telescope uses bigger mirrors. Now when you have a bigger mirror the problem is that uh, the amount of air mass over the mirror they have an extended area. Uh, so some portion may be at a higher temperature compared to the other portion and there will be an asymmetry there will be a, uh, it will be not an homogeneous uh, type of thing and optics will vary so uh, the, uh, there are various methods through which actually the shape um, of the mirrors can be uh, changed uh, using actuators so active and adaptive optics uh, were used uh, by tilting and some bigger mirrors now we have a, we can't have a single mirror so it was a segmented design where mirrors were replaced by bigger wheel mirror was replaced by smaller uh, mirror whose mosaic uh, pattern forms the total mirror, total telescope as such. So uh, you are seeing that this is a picture of actually different types of actuators which can uh, bend the mirror, twist the mirror, tilt the mirror ultimately making corrections for various distortions which are occurring there. So you can see that the size of the uh, mirrors uh, how, how big they are getting. So these are some of the uh, bigger telescopes like Keck telescope well, you, it has a combined it is having two uh, uh, telescopes and the uh, uh, signals light signals from two both the telescope are taken and um, joined together to get a composite uh, higher signal uh, to get a better image. So in that way actually it had a com uh, it gives an equivalent uh, if a telescope would have been a 10 meter telescope the image obtained from this Keck telescope was matching with that. Then we have the Great Canary telescope uh, which use, uh, has 10.4 meter that is 4 percent larger than the telescope and better images were there. So these are the uh, this is the uh, outlay of how actually the Keck telescope works you can see the telescope uh, uh, two from two telescope lights were taken and uh, they are able together to form the consolidated thing. So all these uh, things were going on and pre actually without uh, just by seeing nobody can do research and we require recording of this device. Now we require experiments on which actually the uh, interpretation will be done and data collection analysis will be done and there comes the astrophotography. Now the astrophotography today actually we have the data collection through uh, today nobody sits in an observatory and watch an object actually. There are various instruments which are attached to the telescope and they record the data and ultimately the data are plotted and analyzed and all those things. But uh, there, are, there is a parallel thing like uh, the, there are certain people who photographs uh, the sky, uh, photographs various objects and various phases and then the analysis also helps us. Like uh, you can see the magnetic field uh, of uh, the um, this corona which is around the sun, how, how this light is streaming out at various direction. So these are enhanced through uh, photographic techniques which are called astrophotography. You can see the photograph of Milky Way uh, galaxy. Uh, 
uh, which I was speaking, the uh, star trails, uh, which more shows the polar star and the other stars moving around it, and the um, sun, solar photography. So all these things, so all these things was possible due to the discovery of this charge couple device. And then there are other filters also which are used to eliminate certain uh, wavelengths which are not required uh, for our focus study. So uh, that all were happening and uh, it was happening in a specific wavelength range that is our visible range of uh, 4000 to 7000 degree Armstrong that is the wavelength of the visible light. But then use of discovery of modern detectors uh, we have for example two uh, segments of the electromagnetic spectrum that is the radio and the visible. Uh, in these two range actually we can have detectors on the ground and we can study those objects in this wavelength from the ground. So we have actually our optical telescopes and the radio telescopes because these two waves can come through the atmosphere and reach up till that. Other uh, all wavelengths they get absorbed at various heights uh, at our atmosphere. So for getting uh, observations in those regions either we have to have it in a high altitude uh, through rockets and uh, balloon experiment or we have to go to the space actually to get the data in those wavelengths so detectors are fixed in space so we have today actually detectors in all parts so you are seeing for example the sun when it is seen through a radio telescope its image is somewhat like this so these color codes this color code shows the various activities it it can be calibrated by various parameters like temperature and uh, distribution and all those things so magnetic field so all these things uh, this gives us better insight uh, to understanding of the present status uh, in the radio range the, these are actually the, this is the anatomy of a radio telescope. It, uh, we are all familiar because we have the dish antenna today, but it is much, very much larger uh, compared to our small dish antenna because of the collecting area and it need not be smooth. Like our common telescope, uh, this our visible telescope has to be smooth uh, because light rays, visible rays has to come. But uh, if you have a bigger antenna and uh, we have uh, actually this uh, mesh uh, on which radio waves fall and we can have the feed here and ultimately the signals are taken and then uh, they are processed. So this is the full way actually how it uh, in a very uh, very uh, uh, black box diagram and a simplified approach it is not as simple as shown here but this is showing the abstract model of how radio telescope works. So these are the various pictures you can see uh, that the, at two range one is uh, at, at using various filters we can observe at various uh, wavelengths we can observe the same objects which give the uh, different uh, images uh, giving our giving rise to different types of information which about the particular image then actually uh, uh, there was a discovery of cosmic microwave background radiation so uh, uh, our one of one of our really uh, telescopes in mount palama it was actually uh, 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 it uh, was first used to accidental discover wherever it is pointing uh, one particular radiation could not be eliminated so um, the scientists who were observing this they tried to eliminate it uh, by cleaning the telescope by uh, making it uh, 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 the other th uh, signals from the nearby uh, eliminating those signals or uh, uh, trying to fix those but this particular uh, at uh, temperature this radiation corresponding to a particular temperature of 2.7 degrees was never getting radiated this is present everywhere so this is the cosmic uh, background radiation and this was one of the uh, greatest uh, support of our modern uh, universe theory that is the big bang theory so then uh, people started observing at millimeter and sub millimeter range uh, from the formation study of the formation of galaxies and the origin of the stars planets using those um, like at of comma large millimeter array in chile um, they were using uh, wavelength in this to study uh, because most of these are other things are actually blocked by the the water vapor absorbs but uh, in this wavelength actually it can study so uh, there are various types of uh, other telescopes which were coming out to study the universe at large and then neutrino observatories uh, where because neutrinos are such particles which can never be captured it passes through anything most of the thing and it is a tremendous effort uh, and a special instrument underground in coal fields underneath detectors are kept and special techniques are used to actually capture these objects and these speaks volumes about the universe and even uh, several Nobel prizes have gone uh, for detection and uh, aspect uh, 
uh, astronomy relating to the neutrino so we have the neutrino observatory and now with the detection of gravitational wave a new vistas of astronomy has opened up we have the gravitational wave astronomy so there are different types of telescope like this is a spitzer telescope which is uh, studying the sky in infrared uh, range of radiations uh, and then we have the uh, hubble space telescope uh, which studied in optical as well as in infrared and you are seeing these two images taken by the hubble space telescope of the trapezium uh, cluster uh, which is in the own constellation of orion and you are seeing these two images there then there are gamma bursts uh, uh, which are studied suddenly there are bursts in certain locations due to eruptions and all and these sends uh, shock waves and and these radiations gamma radiations are detected so the gamma bursts are there then compton telescope blast telescope so different detectors and telescope chandra observatory in x ray range studies the universe and uh, chandra is uh, means uh, nasa's of satellite nasa's space telescope but it is in the memory of uh, subramaniam chandra shekhar uh, astrophysicist indian astrophysicist subramaniam chandra shekhar uh, who had great contribution uh, to astrophysics uh, physics of stars in special so uh, chandra observatory is there which observes the sky in x ray and this is our hubble space telescope which has served and now the james watt telescope will also we are it has also gone in space and uh, shortly we will be getting lot of data uh, uh, from that particular new telescope james webb uh, telescope which will give a new outlook to the universe as such so these are various pictures taken by compton x ray and gamma ray observatory and this is a, a toy model of an extremely large telescope which is on the table and which will be built so this is short glimpse of actually uh, what all um, ways actually astronomy moves out and uh, it gives us the insight to know more about our universe where we are how small we are compared to the vast amount of matter so we have the macrocosm and the microcosm at the atomic level these two knowledge combined together to give the full uh, knowledge of the uh, physical uh, universe as such so uh, this is one part and before we do actually i would like to before this session ends we will like to have a small session on these uh, some definitions and all which will be helping you uh, to study uh, further things now astronomical scales now pay some attention to this because this will, uh, will be a bit theoretical um, so uh, astronomical distance masses and time scales this we will be just discussing in uh, a few detail so see we use meters centimeters for our normal uh, studies but uh, for astronomical purposes we have to use a bigger unit this kilometers uh, and all are, are very small so the average distance between earth and sun is taken and it is considered as one astronomical unit is the mean distance between earth and sun and its value is 1.496 into 10 to 11 meter uh, approximately 1.5 into 10 to 11 meter so that is one astronomical astronomical unit remember that one astronomical unit is the average distance between earth and sun then one light year is the distance traveled by light in one year so if you make a conversion so it's one light year is equal to uh, is equal to 9.46 into 10 to the 15 meter or 9. Point, approximately if you do 9.5 into 10 to the 15 meter in that way you can also consider and you can convert light year to astronomical unit and th these are two units and one more bigger unit is parsec There, there is something called parallax which is angular which is uh, actually the angle caused by the uh, uh, our uh, radius of the earth uh, or the diameter of the earth uh, from a particular object so how far is the object from the uh, center of the earth so that angle uh, defines uh, and uh, the, the distance at which that object is when the angular separation means angle caused by the object on the diameter uh, on the radius is 1 second of arc so that is called 1 parsec so uh, 1 parsec is 3.26 light years and these conversions are quite important in astronomy parsec light years astronomical unit and meter so just uh, you should remember uh, how they are actually moving and maybe this slides we will make it available in your uh, whatsapp group also so that you can take note of all these things yeah. then uh, uh, regarding dimension see whenever we take uh, some we want to measure something we have to have a standard on which basis of which actually we measure the objects the unit of measuring size in astronomy is relative to the sun size that is taken as because most of the size of sun is big enough and that solar radius is good enough to measure lot of objects in the sky so what is one solar radius one solar radius is 7 into 10 to the right meter so that is one of the relative uh, dimensions used for astronomical studies 
then unit of mass again mass of the sun uh, this for example this object is 30 solar mass that object is 50 solar mass so solar mass that one mass of uh, sun is taken as a unit and mass of sun is 2 into 10 to uh, 30 kg so that is uh, uh, then time scale to uh, present uh, accepted age of the sun is 5 billion years uh, galaxy is around 10 billion years and universe is around uh, 12 13 12 to 16 uh, billion years uh, and uh, and we have the burst you know we have the star uh, eruption of star which may <laughs> Uh, somebody please mute your uh, mic before because it causes disturbance. Um, uh, please mute your please mute your mic. So on the other hand, we have uh, um, we have uh, the seconds also used in astronomy because of the time scale because of our uh, implosion ex uh, occurs. For example, it. Uh, implodes stars implodes in matter of seconds so these are the vast time scales which are used in astronomy and this is a chart showing uh, various time scale of distance radius and mass uh, there are certain objects like sun earth jupiter there are uh, just a minute uh, please Please be quiet. Jo hi doubt hai. Phone ke kya hai? Linguistics. Ab tum log religion ka pull likha hai. Wo toh ek ne banana hai. Mr. Sujay Devnath, can you can you mute your mic? Sir, kya baato sun raha hai kya? Yo. So this is a slide uh, showing. This is a slide showing actually uh, the various uh, scales and the dimensions of various objects uh, uh, relative to the uh, radius of the sun and the mass of the sun. So we'll forget about the exercise for the time being. And there are two things which are important, uh, two or three definitions which we will do it and we will stop. Uh, one is apparent magnitude. So as I was telling, an object, a star, uh, may appear uh, very bright not because it is having a, a large energy output but because it is closer to us, it is in proximity to us. And similarly, an object may appear dim, not because uh, uh, actually uh, it, it is of low energy output, it may have high energy output, but it's very far away. So the uh, visible out, uh, uh, visibility or the visible uh, uh, output as seen from the surface of the earth can't be taken as a measure of intrinsic property of that particular object. So apparent magnitude of an astronomical object is a measure of how bright it appears from the surface. So um, that is called the apparent magnitude and uh, the brightest object when it was first uh, conceptualized actually the brightest object was given the uh, magnitude of uh, first magnitude and the faintest was six but now the scale is extended we have negative numbers also and positive numbers the bigger the number positive number the fainter it is and bigger the negative number the brighter it is so that is the apparent magnitude. So that is the way actually the, the from 1 to 6 the total magnitude was uh, uh, taken as 100 and so uh, if you take the factor scale uh, because our i earth in logarithmic scale so you have to take it in factor scale so if you take for example uh, each 1 to 2 is having a uh, same ratio as 2 to 3 the magnitude ratio varies and so we have if you take it as an x so we have x to the power 5 is equal to that number so the uh, ratio with which it the on the scale the brightness ratio corresponds to 2 1 5 and the magnitude starts of magnitude 1 is actually 2.5 2 brighter than magnitude 2 and this is the scale in which it is defined so if two stars are having a brightness b1 and b2 corresponds to magnitude m1 and m2 we can derive i will not derive here but we can get a relation with uh, magnitude and brightness as shown in the uh, formulas here so we have uh, two brightness uh, uh, two magnitude b1 and b2 and two brightness so that is um, magnitude brightness uh, scale apparent magnitude brightness scale so you can see uh, based on that whatever we have discussed the difference in magnitude and the brightness ratio how they are related.
So, a magnitude 0 or a negative magnitude have been assigned to extended objects. Uh, for example, a star with minus magnitude is 2.512 brighter than a star with uh, 0 magnitude. So, our sun has a magnitude of minus 27 in this particular scale. So, uh, uh, there are various objects and they are, these are some of the objects, uh, their Indian names are shown and their magnitudes as ascribed on that particular scale. As you can see the sun has a magnitude of minus 26.81, I said minus 27, full moon is minus 12.73, approximately minus 13 and other stars like Sirius, Jupiter and all. You can see how the magnitude varies. So let us forget about the problems and again there are two things which are important for example apparent magnet doesn't give us a good idea so there is something called as a radiant, radiant flux and the luminosity of a star so what is the luminosity what is the difference between radiant flux and the luminosity luminosity of a body is the total energy we all know that many of many of the participants in this are from physics background or engineering physics they have studied so just it is a revision for and if you have studied and if you have forget from other disciplines this is just a refreshing thing so the luminosity of an object is defined as the total energy radiated per unit time uh, and what is the radiation flux the total amount of energy flowing out per unit time per unit area so this is this is the difference between uh, luminosity and the radiant flux the so radiant flux is measured in ergs per second uh, per centimeter square and luminosity is measured in ergs per second because in our astronomical study it is most common to use cgs units that is centimeter gram second that is ergs and that is the reason ergs per second so, um, radiation flux of two sources depends on two factors that is radiant energy emitted by it and the distance of the source from the object. So, based on this, uh, we have a, because if L is the luminosity and F is the flux, we said luminosity that is energy output per time per unit area. If, if you take a sphere surrounding that uh, particular object, so we get a area uh, at a distance r from that particular object, we have a sphere whose area becomes 4 pi r square. So, luminosity by 4 pi r square is the flux. So, luminosity of the sun is 4 into 30 to 33 ergs per uh, second. So, the, and this is one of the important thing which you and similarly what we saw the uh, formula there for magnitude scale and the brightness if you convert it to uh, the flux and the magnitude apparent magnitude you get this uh, uh, ratio of f2 by f1 is equal to 100 to the power m1 minus m2 by 5 so this can be derived easily yeah then we have for example i was speaking about the uh, parsec as a uh, as a unit of distance so if you take an object and place it uh, as a at a you can't place it physically if you uh, mathematically or if you think that an object is placed at a distance of 10 parsec what it would be is brightness so among the absolute magnitude of an astronomical object is the, it is apparent magnitude Apparent magnitude is the brightness that it is visible to us from the sky, from our uh, uh, earth. So, absolute magnitude is the apparent magnitude of the object when placed at a distance of 10 parsecs. So, that is the definition of absolute magnitude. And this is standardized to know actually, we have to bring everything to a standard to know what is the intrinsic uh, energy output of the stars. So, in based on that actually, the, the we have uh, ultimately a very important relation which is that is the difference between the absolute and apparent magnitude that is small m minus capital M can be related to the distance in parsec that is r r if, if the r is the distance in parsec so we have this particular relation which is very important if you know the apparent magnitude and absolute magnitude you can find the distance of the star so that is uh, one of the thing which you should know uh, for studying uh, any any uh, astronomical uh, theories uh, these are uh, some of the things so you can have uh, then you can have various other relations also you can derive it like a uh, luminosity and absolute magnitude or absolute magnitude um, um, so this uh, I'm putting in various forms.